All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, when we're looking at this, one thing I might uh, recommend to you guys, all right, to do this, is rather than having these triangles right on top of each other, no, no, no. What I would do is I would recommend breaking these triangles up so they kind of make a little bit more sense as far as what you're looking at, as far as what angles are related to what angles, all right? So rather than containing them all in one figure, a lot of times you guys can just break them up and just redraw them. And what that does is that allows us to kind of see what angles are congruent to what angles, all right? Now, I'm going to do this in two different ways. You can write it as angle J is congruent to angle H. We know that because they both have their um, H's right. You know, we both have their 90 degree angles. Um, but also looking at your congruency statement, we can see that these, these side lengths, all right, since these are also equal to each other, all right, what we can determine, Jared, is that angle K is not congruent to the other angle K. These two angles are not equivalent, all right? It doesn't break it up evenly. But we can say that K is congruent to our angle G. So I can say angle K is congruent to angle G. Then you can look over here, and you could say that, well, if this angle K is equal to angle G, then this angle G is equal to that angle K. And you might think of this as like, all right, well, this is kind of getting a little bit confusing because we both have Ks and Gs for both triangles. So a way we can get around that is so we can rewrite the angles. We can rewrite, I'm sorry, the angles using different notation. How else can we write an angle besides just what the, what the vertex is? We can also label it using? A prime. We could use prime. Yeah, you, I mean, you could relabel this. But um, you could relabel this and say that's g prime and that's k prime. That would work you know, as well. We could also use three points. So therefore, that would be j, k prime, and g prime. You could also use three points. To represent this angle g, you could say angle j G, K is congruent to angle H. Hey Jared, I asked you not right now. Is actually also congruent to angle H, K, G. So rather than just always using points, remember we can also go back and use three, um, three points to represent the angle. All right? Um, so you could do that for the other one as well if you, didn't, if you wanted to use the prime. Um, so it's j, g prime, k prime, or j, j g, k is congruent to um, h, k, g, if you got away from the primes. All right, so that's another way. And so then the other one would have been angle j, k, g is congruent to angle H, G, K. All right? And the last one, we just need to go for the side lengths. So if these two are equal, then we could say that these two are, are equal because we know there's the same side. And then we can prove, then we could show that these two are going to be current. So we could say that side J, J, G is congruent to H, K. You could say that G, K is go ahead and congruent to k, kg. And then the last one we could do is jk is going to be congruent to hg. OK? So there's a couple different ways you guys could do the angles for this one um, to make it not as much confusing. And then you can go and determine your sides. So therefore, now we can determine that these triangles is triangle G, J, K is congruent to triangle K, H, G. All right? Please be careful with that because I know a lot of students, what they'll do is they'll say triangle G, J, G, J, K is congruent to triangle G, H, K. But G is not congruent to that G, right? These two angles are not corresponding, right? These are not corresponding angles. These two angles are corresponding, and these two angles are corresponding. OK? So just be careful with that. All right.